Hey, welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, King of Do. How are you guys doing today? I'm having a great day here. Excited to talk crypto news and blockchain technology with you guys. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on some new ICOs coming out soon. Um, I'll be covering that in the next few videos. So make sure you guys subscribe if you want to hear more about that. Um, but let's just get right to it. The first thing I want to say, though, is um, I'm having some issues. YouTube's got a few uh, bugs right now. Um, I know on, on holidays, uh, sometimes they switch servers and things get broken. Um, and today seems to be that day because uh, I can't comment. I got a few comments out, um, but there were some that I wanted to comment on and I just couldn't. So I apologize if you didn't hear back from me, but for some reason, every time I, everything I tried, I just couldn't get the comments to post. So I spent a good, you know, 10 minutes struggling to try to get comments posted and uh, YouTube just would not let me comment. Um, it just said that there was some kind of bug. So I apologize if you didn't hear back from me. I tried to do that this afternoon. Um, but there was one in particular I actually wanted to go ahead and just talk about in this video. And um, someone actually brought up a comment that I made about BAT, basic attention token. Because in one of my videos I was talking about how, uh, you know, Google could essentially just do what BAT is doing in a, in a snap, right? Um, if they wanted to. And I should have been more clear on that. Um, I'm not talking about the whole entire BAT model. I'm actually talking about the actual value added for publishers and advertisers. Um, basically, the concept of attention metrics um, being built into the browser. That's something that they could definitely do. They could actually increase the value um, and build out a new ecosystem based on those metrics. And uh, that's kind of what I was referring to. Uh, there's no way in heck Google will ever stop collecting all of our data. Their whole company is built on that and they make a lot of money because of it. So um, that's not, you know, they're not going to go out there and try to like make you and me anonymous on online. It's just not going to happen. But um, they can basically capitalize the other two factors. Uh, which would be the publishers and the uh, advertisers. So I guess the best way to put it, me being an advertiser working in digital marketing, if they were to offer the same type of uh, data and analytics that Brave is hoping to offer, I would probably continue to just use that platform instead of switching to Brave, right? So that's kind of essentially what I meant there. Also, the donation model isn't too hard to copy, um, and, and Google could experiment with that if they wanted to. But uh, at the end of the day, um, I don't think uh, advertisers are really looking to change. They just want something better. And so we'll have to just wait and see if BAT can really make that happen um, and capitalize on it. Maybe they can make enough of a disruption that they do get some mass adoption. Um, I have actually reached out to them and asked to be a part of any beta um, that would be coming up. So um, I may actually get some hands-on experience. Now, I do understand uh, that I probably won't be able to talk about my experience very much because of non-disclosure agreements and things of that nature. So we'll see, guys. I don't know if that will happen or not, but uh, I'm, I'm on the sideline waiting for him to call me in. So um, there's an update on that for you. So, um, you know, I did my five-part investment series, and you guys can go check that out. There will be a link at the end of this video if you haven't seen it yet that ico is this week so you need to do your homework now um i did a, i did an overview on it on my professional opinion on how i feel about bat make sure you check that out um but all that being said that doesn't mean i'm not going to try it like i want to use it want to play with it um i know that i could also purchase more bat in the future if i uh like it even more so you know we've got the ico there's nothing stopping you from getting more coins in the future potentially right so, you know, again, like I always say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversify. Understand that 95 to 99% of all startups fail. And uh, just uh, make sure you, you're diversifying properly. Um, for me, I have, a, you know, I, I, I love my Ether. It's hard for me to lock up an Ether for a while. So, you know, that's that's me. But um, I, do, I do plan on, um, you know, putting some money into BAT, um, Ether rather. Um, no one wants my no one wants my USD. Everyone wants my Ether. Um, I do plan on putting some in there, um, but I will reevaluate more as I get to know the platform better. So 
I'll bring you guys as much as I can on that and my experience with that. We'll see how long it takes. You know, their response was, hey, that's cool. We want you to be a part of it. But they want to wait for the ICO to kind of get wrapped up first. And I don't blame them. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So that covers uh, YouTube comments. And uh, one of the comments I wanted to respond to was about that in particular. So I hope that clears that up. Next thing I wanted to talk about is you guys have been seeing a lot of ads. I don't run any ads on my YouTube channel right now. Um, I may in the future someday, but um, I just don't think I have enough views and followers to really, you know, make it worth uh, make it worth your time, I guess, in a way, because you, you're the ones that have to suffer through the ads, so I don't do that right now. Um, but Monaco um, has been an ad that you may have been seeing. There's a Monaco debit card or credit card or Visa card, technically. I don't know what it is, to be honest. But um, my understanding is that they are promising um, the top ICO um, donators a black card. And it's a little sketchy. It's a little scammy. Um, I will say that this ICO came out of nowhere. Like... I never ran across it at any point in time. Um, it feels really sketchy. Now, it looks professional. It looks legit. But I work with a bunch of people who could produce that same thing within about a month or two time. So, you know, are they on the bandwagon? I don't know. But I do know this. I know that what they're offering on the black card is kind of like too good to be true. If you actually read the details and understand what they're offering... They're essentially offering these people free um, transaction, like no transaction fees for life, essentially. Um, it doesn't matter what type of currency you're exchanging to, back and forth, etc. And I'm like, like the, the potential for that to be abused, you know, the first, first of all, the people who are going to donate the most are likely to be the most wealthy. The most wealthy are most likely to be moving the most money around the world and incurring the most fees. And I'm just, it doesn't seem right. Um, and it sounds too good to be true. Anything that sounds too good to be true, I caution. The fact that the Monaco ads also just came out of nowhere. Literally just like you wake up one day and it's like everywhere. Massive marketing campaigns. Um, I don't know how legitimate it is i don't know anything about the leadership or how long it's been around but if you guys have any information you want to share in the comments below please share them about monaco i would like to vet it out better i don't have a lot of time to uh, vet that one in particular i just wanted to make sure you guys know that it's unusual and there's some red flags so you're going to want to make sure you do your homework um you know the video is really exciting they're talking about things that I, I believe in and I want for the future. I want to be able to send money anywhere on the planet, you know, uh, at a low fee. I don't want to pay 15, 12 percent uh, to the banks. They don't deserve anything, you know, uh, just for taking a taking digital money from point A to point B. There's no reason for that anymore in this day and age. So I really, really believe in that kind of thing. But the fact that there's one card to rule them all is what it like is kind of like what it sounds like they're trying to sell so just be cautious be cautious about monaco and again uh teach me what you guys find make sure you leave in the comments below it helps the other uh people watching this video too do their homework so um steam it registration issues i've been getting a lot of feedback on this i actually made a post today on steam it and blew up pretty quickly surprisingly um but essentially uh, Steemit registration takes a long time, and I'm a huge fan of Steemit, but I also know that uh, from being in marketing, I understand how critical the psychological moment is when you actually commit to something. Like that moment you decide to check out. Not Like you have a moment when you add it to the cart, but then you check out. Like you actually make a commitment, right? Well, registration is like you're kind of like I'm I'm so interested I'm committed into learning more and I'm actually going to sign up for this right so the challenge is is that that's when that's when you're at peak interest you will never have a higher level of interest than at that moment in, in time well steam it takes like anywhere from two to four I don't even know maybe five days to get signed up 
because it's actually what I learned today is that they are manually vetting out and making sure that each registration is real. That way there's not bots signing up and doing fake voting and everything. And I will say this, that's awesome. That is awesome to know that there are people that care that much about the community to make sure that it's safe and it's real and that the value being shared is real. Um, anyhow, all that being said, hopefully there's a solution in the works. Uh, you know, I got, there are some good comments in the post uh, I left on Steemit. If you'd like to read it, just go to my description below. You'll see, follow me on Steemit. Just click that and I'll take you to my blog. You'll see my post and the replies. And there were some really, really excellent replies on Steemit. So, um, I learned a lot, and uh, hopefully we can keep that conversation going. But I just wanted to say, I keep talking about Steemit. A lot of you have signed up, and I understand that it's frustrating um, that you have to wait so long. But I, I want to encourage you, it's worth the wait, because it is very legit. Like, you don't have to deal with any BS like you, like you usually have to deal with. And a lot of social media sites that have a lot of bots going around creating fake news, fake coverage, things are curated properly. Um, fake news is removed, um, you know, and real news floats to the top. Things that you're really interested in, like cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, uh, that kind of stuff is there, and it's good, good perspectives from people who literally are doing it, like programmers themselves, developers themselves, all the way down to people like you and me that are just passionate about it and want to learn more and want to contribute and there are ways you can contribute if you don't know what to do start on steam it you will eventually find that there is a place for you in the community you just got to get a part you just got to start talking you just got to get in there and be a part of it and get to know some of these people uh, it's a great platform so just wanted to say that about steam it registration issues it's a known problem they're working on it but also know that the reason is is because they uh, you know, they basically want to have a safe, um, real community. So keep that in mind when you're signing it up. If you're going to go sign up, understand it's going to take some time. I understand that you're at peak interest at that moment and you want to start right away. It's just not the case right now. But hopefully in the future they can, um, you know, maybe come up with some uh, volunteer system or nominate users to uh, help people get vetted out faster right like me i would do it right if you told me you signed up i would i could be someone that maybe goes and vets you out so it's gonna have to be people who are really well established in the community and well known and well respected they just, but they need to do something like that uh soon uh because essentially our community as a whole is exploding and so is steam it so it's you know a little bit of a scalability issue in the in the one-to-one uh, validation of each user. So anyhow, I just want to talk about that and get that out of the way. I had a request for REI DAO, um, which is essentially a real estate investment uh, opportunity. And I think it's really, really cool. It's something that um, I think we've all dreamed of doing. And I just wanted to go over that with you guys um, real quickly. And I went through and I actually read the whole white paper. I definitely have some concerns. It looks like it's a little early on, but I just wanted to explain the concept to you because most of you will get excited about the concept. So essentially what it is is like um, there's going to be property that is purchased, um, investment properties, uh, maybe even some uh, properties to be built, right? And these properties, they're essentially going to raise the money and issue tokens. Uh, for the property. So the property gets posted on a site. You can go donate using the tokens um, or you can use USD or whatever to get tokens back, excuse me. Um, and essentially kind of create this ecosystem of like um, a thousand people can all go in together on and buy a house. Or maybe we could all build a skyscraper together. Wouldn't that be cool? If you ever wanted to own your own skyscraper, you could actually own a piece of one. That's kind of a cool thing to tell your friends. I probably would do it just to say I have a few skyscrapers in Dubai, right? <laughs> so, start, you know, uh, spreading my empire around. But um, I'm a huge fan of real estate and uh, personally, uh, you know, as an investment vehicle. And it's definitely something that is not easily attainable. And that's one of the things that they talk about. So I'm going to go through the problem statements about what in the white paper about what they believe 
this does. So below are the problems and limitations identified with the current real estate ownerships that prevent most people from being able to raise capital or realize the benefits, etc. And so that's what this uh, REI DAO basically is trying to fix uh, and what they're trying to solve. So what they want to solve is affordability. Owning a piece of real estate has a relatively high barrier of entry. Real estate ownership usually requires big financial commitments, which are out of the reach of many people. Likewise, for real estate developers, their market is limited. And this is so, so true. For, um, you know, the affordability for, you know, if you actually took the whole world um, into account, right? Right now, if you're watching me on like a PC, you're probably like, you know, you're way up there in the world, really. Like if you actually own your own computer, you're, you're up there. Um, there's, there's really no way for, you know, the average person on this planet to really own real estate. It's very, very difficult. Um, you know, in America, we have all these rules and like, re uh, regulations. And then of course you've got, you got to have a good credit score. If you made a mistake when you were younger, you, you know, you need years to fix it just because you made a mistake or maybe you were dealt a bad hand and things like that. It just takes so much time to repair your credit and get in a position to buy, um, you know, and they're going to try to solve this by making it affordable to everybody. Wealth di diversification. Given that real estate ownership is usually invo uh, involving a big amount of money, an individual with limited fund will have limited ability to diversify his or her wealth allocation, um, even if it's big or small proportion. Okay, so essentially what they're saying there is that um, let's say you actually are like, okay, I'm going to get into real estate investing, right? Well, chances are you're only going to be able to afford like one single place. You're not very diversified, right? What happens if the market in that community like crashes or, um, you know, the whole neighborhood catches fire, right? Or uh, things like that. You're not very well diversified, right? You're, you're all in on a single property. Um, so it's a really big decision that makes it uh, much more important when you choose your first investment property. Also, that being said... It is becoming absolutely ridiculous in the United States to be a real estate investor. They basically almost don't want anyone to become one. Um, you know, it, you can. it's pretty easy to get one property. After that, it gets harder and harder. It's like, it's harder every time. The more you try to get property, the harder it becomes because there's so many rules. And, uh, uh, basically, ever, especially since the, the market collapse, um 2008 2009 when everything went to went down the down the drain uh everyone got in trouble because they were giving out money too easily right so basically and all investors have suffered and we're still suffering you know basically about a decade later and and it's not cool and i don't know what it's like where you live but uh wealth diversification isn't an option for everybody in the world um even if you are invested in real estate and you have a few different properties, you're still not very well diversified. Chances are you're, di you're diversified just in your own community, right? It's very rare that you're going to find someone that owns real estate all over the country. You know, that's for the, the super rich, right? Um, usually real estate investors are on a lot of property within the same county or the same cities, right? So they're still not very well diversified and there's more risk with that, right? Um, you, you live in a city that is dependent on the local paper mill for example right like half the community works there what happens when it goes on strike what happens when they get shut down what happens when there's an accident and you know the the whole place goes up in smoke um you're not very well diversified if you put all your eggs in one community right so um the coin's going to try to help with that in that you can own just a small piece of property all over the world uh, liquidity. Buying and selling physical real estate has not been very liquid. That's very true, right? It's not easy to buy, but it's just as hard to sell. Um, and it takes time and there's middlemen and all these fees and it's just garbage. It's just, it's just so much work. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I'd like to think that if all that wasn't there, we, you know, maybe real estate would actually be a little more volatile. It's just so hard to sell. Most people just sit around and say, well, I know I could sell my house right now, but it is just so much work. I'd rather not. Um, I, you know, there would probably be more real estate on the market if it was easier to do.
global reach, many of the real estate opportunities are currently contained within the home jurisdictions and overseas property ownerships have been limited. So that's a great example, right? I would love to be purchasing property in some up and coming uh, uh, cities and countries. Um, you know, I'd love to own some property in Dubai right now, right? Just just how exciting it is. I'd love to. I'd love that. Um, you know, wherever you live, you probably know of an area that's really, really developing right now where you're like, man, I wish I could get my money in there because in 10 years, it's going to be crazy. And, um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure some of you have ideas about where you'd want to put your money, but um, you kind of can't. It's hard. It's just hard right now. And so um, if you have any ideas of where you think there's good investments, um, let me know. Because uh, there's going to be a coin like this that is successful at some point. I don't know if this is the one, but I do know at some point there's going to be some type of DAO where we can all invest in real estate together. And so I'd love to know where you guys think some awesome hot spots are. Something that in uh, you know 10 years from now will be crazy big. So, um, I went over global reach. Simplicity and convenience. Of course, the paperwork administration involved in a single transaction, a single real estate transaction is ridiculous. Um, and then it gets more complex if there's co-owners. Crazy complex. Like, can you imagine a thousand people trying to buy the same property, how much paperwork that would be? It would probably cost as much as the houses just in paperwork, just so that we could split it up. It makes zero sense, right? So they're trying to create a way where it's simpler and convenient. Um, essentially, they're going to have, you know, people actually doing all the paperwork, etc., and you know, things like that. So that we don't have to deal with it. And then, of course, there's trust. When two or more people are involved in real estate co-ownership, trust is always a concern, and that can lead to potential conflict. So I, you know, they're very vague there, and I think what they're trying to say is that there'll be um, digital governance put in place using voting systems so that people can make decisions, if that makes sense. You know, um, I can foresee a day where we're all invested in a skyscraper, and there's a floor in the skyscraper where uh, someone wants to buy that one floor, right? Just one floor, not the whole thing. And um, essentially, we, we, we would vote on whether we want to sell it or not to that guy. Or continue to rent it out because that's something else that they talk about in this paper is that uh, rental property you know the value would be distributed back to us in coins etc um, and our wealth would essentially grow because of the real estate income okay so there's some problems they're trying to solve I'm gonna try to wrap this up because it's 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 a lot more than that but I just kind of want to give a high level and give you my thoughts on it uh, a couple things on this one in particular Saw some spelling errors in here, and it's probably because of translation, but just something that I, I saw. I don't know how big of a deal that is to you guys, but just, you know, I'm not the best speller in the world myself. Um, and so when I when I see someone else's, I'm really disappointed because I'm, I'm pretty much disappointed in myself. I grew up with Microsoft Word doing all my correcting of all my spelling, so, you know, I have to ask for forgiveness on that. But... Um, so I saw some spelling errors, but the most concerning thing is, is that they they talk about a third party trust, some third party organization, maybe it's a bank, somebody that all this property is essentially titled over to. So it's kind of weird. Um... I don't know about the legalities of this one. Well beyond me, guys. Well out of my expertise. If you have any insight on that, let me know. But, you know, I asked myself, man, are these guys just going to raise a bunch of money, issue a bunch of coins, um, and then just skip town with their partner? You know, and now they just own all this property and we don't get anything back or... You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I'm just... I'm just a little hesitant in this one in particular. But at the same time, man, the this is the kind of stuff that gets me excited. The, the, the ability to set people free financially again, right? 
the, the kind of concepts that uh, at one time made America amazing, right? Is that, you know, there was so much opportunity. We still have an amazing opportunities here, don't get me wrong, but um, not as much as we used to. But still just the concept that I can actually invest my money in any type of vehicle that I choose. Um, I don't, you know, my my $10 is treated the same as someone's ten million dollars um, it should be that way it should be equal it should be fair there shouldn't be a law that says that I need to be some type of accredited investor to invest in this skyscraper I, you know that's BS if I wanna give you a hundred dollars why won't you take it um, and one of the reasons really is the middlemen and the and you know uh, the government with laws and regulations and of course all the paperwork and fees and you know, there will be a solution that exists someday. I do not believe, however, that's going to happen in two years. Ten years, I think it could all blow our mind. Uh, that is a, that's something that I, I believe in that um, you may have heard said other places before. People often say when it comes to technology, new technology and innovation, that the general public always overestimates what can be done in two years always but they always underestimate what it can do in 10 so in my mind I want to believe that this is all right here in front of us for the taking and two years from now we can however what's crazy in my mind it's super crazy guys is that in 10 years this concept may be so fleshed out and so real it's as real as Uber. You might just go ahead and hop on your app and be like, oh, sweet. I just got some beachfront property. Awesome. Pretty cool, right? Um, really, really exciting. I think there'll be cool incorporations of things like timeshare. I think the timeshare industry is about to get completely wrecked. I think in 10 years, it'll never be the same because of this type of technology. They already do silly things like issue coins and then you sell your coins when you you know uh don't want to use your timeshare or whatever or you buy more because you can't afford the place you actually want to go to um it feels very scammy it feels very dirty um and I apologize for anyone that's in that industry but that's just how it feels from the outside i'm sorry that that's what it is um you know it's kind of like people in the car industry you know, people can relate to that um a lot of people have negative connotations with car salesmen and things like that even though that some of the nicest people i know are car salesmen but you know it's not their fault that um the leadership <laughs> makes decisions that are bad and hurt people and things like that so um there's good people in every industry so um, just always keep that in mind guys all right so rai dow i took a quick look at it i'm gonna be following this one a little closely um, because I'm fascinated by it and some someone someone actually asked in a comment for me to take a look at it and I did and that's just what I saw and what I wanted to talk about here on the channel I could go deeper with you guys but I don't think many of you uh, would care to go as deep as I would want to go on it so if you have questions go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments below and I'm gonna wrap that up but one last thing I wanted to do before I go is I wanted to um, kind of present a challenge to my to my little group of followers here i definitely appreciate you guys so much um and i've been this has been bugging me a lot i've been it's been on the tip of my mind every single day um i dream about it i i ha, you know i go to bed at night and i'm laying there awake thinking about it um i'm at work losing my train of thought because i, I continuously see these opportunities like i run into these business business problems at work where i'm like wow, blockchain would solve that in an instant. Like, this is silly. Why are we still doing it this way when the answer is already out there, right? Um, so my challenge is for you guys is that I want to create a business with you guys. This is the just the idea, the concept. So let's we're going to create an EC20, and we're going to call it DoCoin, okay? All of us are in different occupations. We all have different talents and things like that. So my real question is, is like, what type of business would we create right uh, we could log into Aragon and create a digital governance and actually have a decentralized organization but what is it you guys would actually want to do what ideas do you have 
um, that you believe that aren't being done yet or you believe will be done. Maybe someone's doing it, they're not doing it the right way. Um, I think it would be fascinating. I have a very big belief system that in 10 years, we'll all still probably have centralized jobs. But I think in the same way that we all have the opportunity, at least in America, um, not, not everyone has the opportunity. I, I take that back. But there are other opportunities to make a side hustle, right? In the same way that Uber um, is a side hustle, I believe that no matter what your talent is, uh, whatever it is you do, that you will have a side hustle that is blockchain related in a decentralized organization where you are actually contributing um, to a, you know to a community and you are getting rewarded for it. I actually believe that. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is is I just want to know what your ideas are, what you believe um, could be a decentralized organization that would work. Uh, I've been thinking about. Um, uh, all kinds of things that I do in my world, like e-commerce and digital content, digital marketing, um, branding, things of that nature. And I'm just fascinated to, to hear what you guys would, would have as ideas. Feel free to share them. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have um, in your brains as well. So, all right, guys. So that's my challenge to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope you learned something. I hope you're having a beautiful holiday. Um, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you give me a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to hear more of this. I really appreciate all the subscribers. It's blowing my mind. I never expected this. I won't lie. I had no intent of having this many people subscribed. It's super humbling. I have no idea why you guys listen to me. <laughs> um, but I really appreciate all the support. Um, I got another donation recently. Someone sent me even more NIM. I don't know where I'll, I mean, huge props to all my NIM fans out there. I love NIM, so keep it coming. I, I, I stack NIM as much as I can, so appreciate it very, very much that you're contributing to that. Um, you guys have been uh, upvoting me on Steemit, and uh, my posts are uh, netting a lot of steam, which is great, which is huge, because I think steam could be um, as much as $5 um, someday, so... You know, knowing that, you know, whatever it is I'm earning could be five times that uh, is amazing. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. It's also helping me spread the good news of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology on that platform. Um, and uh, that's really awesome. So, all right, guys. Well, that's it. I really hope you guys are having a great holiday weekend. And wherever you're at in the world, I hope you have a great day. I really, really appreciate you guys so much. I hope you guys will come back again soon. And until then, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you. Have a great day.